الله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا ابي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا رحم الراحم We said a very important part of management is planning and Inshallah, we will talk about other elements. So planning, decision making, organization, leadership, using resources, and making sure that we are moving towards achieving our goals. These are different things that we have to talk. When it comes about planning, we expanded because we thought this is important for even our personal life that we plan everything and we don't leave it for chances. I mentioned a few more points about planning. One is we have to be careful about every small portion of our time. It's not that only years matter or months matter or weeks matter every second matters imagine if uh, you are for example taking exam and there is a limited time sometimes even few seconds can help you to answer more questions and maybe pass the exam. Sometimes you can fail because of you. Or when there is a race, you see sometimes the first person who finishes just few seconds or fractions of second qualifies that person for winning. Our ulama who have been successful have been very careful about their timing. Akhund Mullah Ali Hamedani, one of our great ulama, it is said that he had always a book with him. He had under his arm, you know, always a book that if there is a little free time, he doesn't just, you know, waste his time. He was always uh, able to read something. Amir al-Mumni alayhi salam said, Inna umraka adadu anfasik wa alayha raqibun yuhsiha. Your life is certain number of uh, opportunities that you have to breathe. And every time part of your life is consumed. And there is someone who is uh, registering so you cannot get extension you know or you know just uh, have it as much as you want then we said we have to take care of priorities if you don't have priorities if you don't uh, do what is more important and do just what is important or what is not important then you are wasting as Amir al muminin said man al-bighayr al-muhim Whoever engages with something which is not important has forsaken and wasted something which is more important. To do things in less time, not rushing. Rushing is bad. But if you can do something sooner, do it sooner. And then there are things that we have to find out based on your lifestyle that these are enemies of time these are things that waste our time a lot every person may be different but we have some common problems for example unnecessary calls unnecessary 
telephone calls, WhatsApps, chats, messages. This takes lots of time. And sometimes we feel these are actually very necessary. We are so much used to it. It's very difficult to understand what is necessary, what is not necessary. Uh, once we had a conference in Oxford and we had discussion about this, and one person said something that I liked it. He said, uh, it's good to have a, like a kind of sabbatical in order not to get too much used to it and make it habitual, if every day or every week you can have some time that you are offline. This helps a lot not to lose your control. For example, you say, this time on Friday I am offline. You don't need to announce people unless if they wonder why you don't respond, but at least for yourself. Or every day this time, I'm not online. In the past, communication was difficult. You know, imagine you wanted to send a letter. To write a letter, and sometimes you had to draft a letter, then write it again, and you know, go to the post office, you know, post it, and takes some time. Now, Alhamdulillah, it's easy, but. This easy communication brings its own challenges. Now you have to do more and more and people expect you to be instant. Why you didn't answer right away? And sometimes you don't have time to think, you just want to say something to make that person feel you respect that person. Anyway, so it's very uh, important uh, source of wastage of time if we are not managing our communications and our conversations. And this is in addition to the problems that it can make to our personal relations with people. That's another issue. Another thing that wastes our time is to embark on something when it is not prepared. You know, sometimes you see people take five years to make a project because when they start the project, they start planning. They start looking for design, for map, for other things, for money. Sometimes people take one year to plan and then in six months they pro finish the project. So we should not waste our time by embarking on something which is not yet ready, we are not clear. And this is a very important source of wastage. Another thing is not to waste your time with people who are not reasonable. There are people that are wasting our time. You don't feel any use in communicating to them. They have nothing to offer and you don't feel, you know, that you are also helping them. You know, sometimes I offer, I think I am helping. Sometimes I say, this person is not appreciating. Even I am, you know, maybe feeling that I'm making that person more upset and more angry. Of course, your Islamic duty of Amr al-Ma'roof, Irshad, all are there. But be careful about people who are just uh, not productive. Uh, to have relation with them. Another thing is media. I don't know, people are different. Some people spend lots of time on watching movies, watching TV, watching websites. I don't know, surfing websites, news. Uh, everything has to have a clear, you know, policy. We cannot ignore the news, but how much we have to spend on news? You should know. It's not that all of a sudden you come to yourself and say, oh, today I spent five hours on reading the news. And then for a few days you say, I don't want to know anything about the world. 
This ifrat and tafrit is not good. That either you do too much or too little. Like the person who was on the roof and someone told him, you are going to fall, go backwards. So he went so much backward that from other side of the roof, <laughs> he fell down. I have heard many people, they say, it has become too much. I don't want to know anything about the world and about news. Maybe for some days it's okay because sometimes you need some rest. But if you totally stop following up what is happening, it's not good. Because you have to know the world. But you have to manage. You have to identify uh, reliable sources or at least alternative unreliable sources so that by putting them together you can get some general picture but you are not a news analyst you are not a politician all of you so you don't need to spend too much time on these things the same with games and i don't know this type of thing you have to be very careful about your time another thing is to find what's the best time for everything. Suppose I am to, I have, I'm a student. I have to study four or five hours, okay, or more. When? It's not just enough to say I spent four or five hours on a study. When you are fresh, a study. Sometimes, you know, when we start our day, by the time we realize, we answer, you know, emails and, you know, calls and do this and do that. All our fresh time has gone. And when we are, you know, tired and sleepy, then we want to study. This is not good. You have to find out what time is better for your main aims, main activities. That's very important, especially for... You know, a study for ibadah, it's very important to have the time that you are alert, you are, you know, fresh. We should have a list of our activities. And a good manager always should have this list in front of his eyes or her eyes that what you want to do today, what you want to do this week, what are, are your deadlines, what you want to achieve, what your team has to achieve. So we should be careful about this. Even if you have great memory, don't rely only on your memory. Another thing is that when you plan, don't allow exceptions easily. You say, I am a flexible person. Okay, it's good to be flexible because if you are too rigid, then sometimes you face problems because there are things that are not foreseen. There are things which are not expected. Sometimes a good opportunity comes, a risk comes. You have to be flexible. But how much you want to be flexible? Especially people who are not very determined. Sometimes one, two exceptions in their plans can make the whole plan collapse. For example, I say from today, I want to spend every day half an hour on reflection, on muhasabatul nafs. Tonight I go, I am tired. Tomorrow I have to call someone. Thursday night, we have masjid. Friday, I don't know, we go to Qabristan. So everything, these exceptions never stop. I want to do my salat on time. But now I have a meeting. Another time, you know, I have to make food for family. So these exceptions always come. So it's very important if you have a plan, Till you are fully in control of your plan and you are really sure that these exceptions are not going to stop you, don't accept exceptions. Many times we have started good plans, but then we didn't manage to finish.
Another thing which is very important is baraka and tawfiq. Baraka and tawfiq are two spiritual elements in planning from Islamic perspective. There are people who plan and even they complete, but nothing good comes. Even for risk, for I don't know, business, for I don't know anything, for tabligh, for studies. But sometimes people with the same efforts or maybe less, you see lots of good comes. There is baraka in the work. Those who are secular, they don't understand what is baraka. If you say baraka, they don't understand. They say, we haven't studied this in our textbooks, you know, in the university. There is no such a thing as baraka. Everything is just materialistic. But we are very much uh, sh sure that the same material factors, depending on the approach of the person, the soul of the person, the intention of the person, the du'as of other people, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can have totally different results. A doctor who goes to his surgery and his intention is to help people in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a similarly qualified doctor who just goes there, you know, as a job and has no concern for health of people. It's just my job, I am paid by that. We think in the way they diagnose, in the way they prescribe, in the way they talk to the patient, there can be big difference. Two alim, the same knowledge. But the impact that they can have on the lives of people can be different. It's not just knowledge, it's not just qualifications, it's not just your techniques. Baraka is something else. Baraka is abundant goodness, is khayr kathir, that you bring it with worldly things, you open this channel this, I don't know, pack of mercy in dunya, but what Allah brings through that is totally different. You have to go to work. You have to, for example, open your shop. But how much you are going to get through this, Baraka is very important. And therefore, if you want to be very successful, <coughs> there are times that you have to be extra careful. You have to always be careful, but there are times that you have to be extra careful. Whenever you want to plan something, right at the time of planning. You want to start a business, you want to, I don't know, buy something, sell something, make a travel, partnership, choose your career, choose your study subject, right at the time of planning is one of the times that Baraka can be secured. Because if anything from the time of planning is for the sake of Allah, with good intention, with sincerity, with wishing good for people, Baraka can come. If I make a decision just for worldly reasons and later I want to bring Baraka by having a dua and hadith a kisa, it's not going to work. You know, I start a business and I have no concern about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I hold few majalis in my place, say Baraka comes. Baraka, if you want, from the first moment you start planning, Either dedicate to Allah if you can, if not, at least involve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say one of the uh, greatest scholars, I think was, if I'm not mistaken, was Sheikh Ja'far al-Shushtari. He was very spiritual. He has some books on Imam Hussein, like Khasa'is al-Husayniyah. 
So once he went on member, sat on member and said, all the prophets, all the messengers, all awliyaullah have said to be pure, mukhlis. I say, be mushrik. And the people were surprised. He said, they said, dedicate everything to Allah. I say, be mushrik means at least dedicate part of it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have become mukhlis in the sense of giving all to other than Allah. So at least give part of it. At least 10% of your intention should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If not 100%. So when you want to plan something, that's the best time to bring barakah. But then when you proceed, when you employ people, when you, I don't know, take loans from the bank, I don't know, whenever you decide about salaries, about how to pay off your you know, debt or anything. But when you plan, especially, it's very important time. And then there are also times that barakah of Allah is more. Like, for example, months of Ramadan is the month of barakah. أَغْبَلَ إِلَيْكُمْ شَحْرُ اللَّهِ بِالْبَرَكَةِ وَالرَّحْمَةِ وَالْمَغْفِرَةِ Days of Eid, day of Jum'a, night of Jum'a. So if you can make your best thinking and planning in these great times. Alhamdulillah, in our community, when we want to have marry, you know, when we want to do something good, we try to somehow make it in these times. This is not just formality. These really have impact on bringing barakah. Having wuzu, you can always have wuzu and al wuzu or nuron. Wuzu is always light. You go to shop, have wuzu. Say, I don't touch my business without wuzu. I don't touch my, uh, I don't know, desk as a teacher without wuzu. If you look at your job in this way, then your job becomes sacred. Who makes your job sacred? You can make your job sacred. I am going to clean, I don't know, my home. I am going to drive. Anything I am going to bake, I do it with wuzu. This brings barakah. But I have to make sure that I have understanding of wuzu, not that it becomes a routine that I don't pay attention. You know, I'm going to now cheat and I, I have wuzu. I'm going to tell lies and I have wuzu. I am going to, you know, backbite and I have wuzu. Even I have qusla juma. Unfortunately, these things sometimes become routines. We don't pay attention. But when you make wuzu, it means you are like a person who has washed himself very carefully and now is outside, careful not to be touched by anything dirty. Wuzu is this kind of tahara. And then tawfiq. We can say a lot about, you know, barakah, you know, salayya rahim, all these things that bring barakah, but our time is very limited. I want to say something about tawfiq. Alhamdulillah, we had, I think, two, three sessions in Hose on Tawfiq and Akhlaq, so people can also follow that. But I mentioned uh, just some hadith about Tawfiq. What is Tawfiq? Tawfiq in Arabic means bringing things together. Wifaq, muwafaqa, tawafuq, that means like agreeing. When you bring opinions together, when you bring people together, this is all tawfiq. But technically, when we, we say tawfiq, it means that those factors that are required for success, if they come together, this is tawfiq. For example, I want to study, I want to go to Hose for a study. 
But my decision is not enough. Because we don't live in vacuum. Many, many things have to come together so that I can do what I want. Maybe I am not healthy. Maybe I have family problems. Maybe there is no hose. Maybe there is no teacher. Maybe there is no security. Maybe I don't have money to go there. Maybe there is no visa. There are so many things. When all these come together and I can study, then I can say, Alhamdulillah, I have tawfiq to study. I want to write a book which is useful for people. <coughs> I need knowledge. I need expertise. I need to know how to write. I need to know how to organize. But many times people have all this, but they don't have tawfiq. So many things happen that it stops them. You see, Sheikh Abbas Qummi, Rahmatullah. He was not the most knowledgeable person in our history. He was a knowledgeable person, but you cannot say he was the most knowledgeable person. And even I think there is no problem, Allah knows, to say that he was not the most pious person in all history of the Shia. But for some reason, he had this tawfiq that he compiled Mafatihul Janan. And I don't think any book written or compiled by any person other than Ma'asum has been so much useful and beneficial. Especially a book that people use in their most sacred times and places. Yeah, you know, you can write a book on Aqaid, which is very good, Alhamdulillah. But it's different from the book that people in Laylatul Juma, in I don't know, Du'ai Nudba, Du'ai Samat, they go for ziyarah, they <coughs> massage it. Everyone in the best time of the day, they use this du'a. Best time of the year, they use uh, sorry, this book. Many books were before him by great scholars. And for centuries they were used. Like Iqbal by Sayyidu Tawus, Misbah by Kafhami, Misbah al-Mutahadid by Shaykh Tusi. They have been used and of course they also inshallah get reward because they are sources of Mafati. But Allah somehow blessed this person with this tawfiq. How many thousands of times this book has been reproduced? In how many languages? Part of it was his sincerity, but there must be many factors. It is said that Sheikh Abbas was not that much known to his own father. So, you know, one of the books of Sheikh Abbas Gumi is he has uh, something about. Uh, the hereafter, Zadul Ma'ad, uh, he has, you know, summarized or written something uh, about the hereafter. Once he was uh, with his father and someone was on member and was quoting from the book of Sheikh Abbas, Ummi, but not mentioning the name and saying there is such a book and, you know, and his father told him, you know, I want you to become like the author of this book. Look, everyone is benefiting. And he didn't say it's my book. <laughs> he had all the reasons to make his father happy. He said, this is my book, father. You know? <laughs> but he was so sincere that he didn't say even to his father, this is my book. So Allah gave him this tawfiq. And there are... Many examples, alhamdulillah, you have seen. For example, Allah metabatabai. I don't think any person in the Shia community and any person even in the Sunni community, if they want to do tafsir properly, 
they can do anything without reading Al Mizan, without checking what Allah Mataba is saying. This is Tawfiq. And many, many examples of like that. Let's read some hadith. Amirul Mumin salam said, At Tawfiq Inayatun. Tawfiq is a special gift, a special blessing that Allah gives. At Tawfiq Rahmatun. Tawfiq is a kind of mercy, a kind of Rahma. Rahma does many things. One of it is that brings things together, things which are not all under your control. لا ينفع اجتهاد بغير توفيق. No matter how much you work, how hard you work, if there is no توفيق, it's not going to benefit. لا ينفع اجتهاد means hard working is not going to benefit without توفيق. Get it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you see you are not succeeding, see what is blocking tawfiq. Uh, in the lectures in the Hose, I explained there are factors that bring tawfiq and there are factors that block tawfiq. One of the factors that give tawfiq is respect to the parents, to the elders, and to the teachers, to ulama, especially for students, respect for the teachers is very, very important. Brings tawfiq. And displeasing parents, elderly members of community, family, teachers, ulama, blocks tawfiq. <laughs> Amir al muminin said, La qa'ida kat tawfiq. There is no leader like tawfiq. Tawfiq pushes you gently to your success. It's like a nice wind that puts you in the right direction. Minat Tawfiq Al-Wuqufu Inda al A very important element in Tawfiq is when you are not sure, you stop. When there is confusion, you stop. Don't say, I have to move. You are on the crossroad. Say, I have to move. No, first right, understand what's the right road. Don't just go. Say, because I have to move. You have to wait till it becomes clear. Amir al also said, At tawfiq mumiddul aql. Tawfiq assists intellect. If you are very wise, very rational, very intelligent, but you need tawfiq, otherwise you don't get it uh, right. You make mis funny mistakes sometimes. Sometimes people who are too proud make very funny mistakes to give a lesson to themselves and others. Ayyuhannas, innahu man istansahallah wuffiqah. Amir al says, O oh people, Whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good, ask Allah to be in charge of his affair and bring good for him, he will be given tawfiq. And whoever takes Allah's word as his guide, would be guided to the best to the most upright path. فَإِنَّ جَارَ اللَّهِ آمِنْ The one who has taken jawar, taken refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is safe. وَعَدُوَّهُ خَائِفْ The one who has showed enmity to Allah is in fear. And there are much more but our time is over. So 
in addition to everything that other people do for worldly success, we believe that there are more factors that can help us with success. And sometimes these can make your success go beyond expectations, beyond what an ordinary human being can do. Sometimes with your talents, with your skills, with your money, with your own planning, Allah can bring good to millions of people, hundreds of millions of people. Don't limit your ambition and narrow your ambition. Dedicate everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Allah, use me in the way that you like. Show me what I should do, but then take this as your work. I want my work to be your work. If it's my work, it's limited. But if I am working for you, then there's no limit. This approach to everything will help. No matter it is business, it's, I don't know, job, it's religious, tabligh, whatever. If we have this right approach, it will help a lot. May Allah, inshallah, give you barakah and tawfiq in all you do. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Um, we pray for your tawfiq to keep benefiting the community. Um, just as a rem reminder again, next week there's no session. Inshallah, the next session will be on Tuesday, 17th of March. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time for Q&A today. Um, and in keeping with the spirit of dua for this semester, inshallah, we can end with Sheikh uh, reciting a dua after which we will close the session. Sure. Inshallah, we are going on Saturday for a trip to Switzerland. Some 20 people, we are going for some program with World Council of Churches and another movement. So we need your du'as, like always. Please pray that, inshallah, the trip goes very well and brings uh, so much barakah that we don't expect, inshallah. نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم العز الأجل الأكرم وبالقرآن المستحكم وبفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها يا الله 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 يا رحمن يا رحيم يا أرحم الراحمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك وكفنا يا قاضي الحاجات ويا كافي المهمات إنك على كل شيء قدير Oh Allah, please send the best of your salutations to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad Please enable us to follow footsteps of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad Please keep us and our brothers and sisters and children and friends all over the world always on the right path Please do not let our suffering be in our relation with you. Please do not let our suffering be in our iman and taqwa and velaya. Please make our Imam al-Zaman happy with us. Please enable us to bring always joy to the heart of Imam al-Zaman. Please make the people who lead us the path towards you always strong and healthy and dignified. Please keep our community and all believers and all humanity safe in all circumstances. Please enable humanity to overcome all the challenges and in particular this virus. Please enable us to resume all our activities, especially all our religious activities as normal as soon as possible. Please give shifa to all people who are ill. Please give shifa in a very comforting way to the people who have lost their hope in shifa in this month of Rajab. Please send your rahmah and maghfara to all mu'mineen and mu'minat from beginning of history to the end. And send a special rahmah and maghfara to the people who have rights upon us. 
Please give our parents who are alive, healthy, and happy and dignified life. Keep them always pleased with us. And those who have passed away, please be very generous in rewarding them for their good deeds and forgive them for any mistakes and sins. And let them be with Muhammad and Allah Muhammad. And please make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life. Rahimallahu man yagra'u al-fatiha ma'as-salawat. Oh, wow.